Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with your morning look at markets for Wednesday, November 11th, Veterans Day. Before we get started, I want to send out a thank you to any veterans listening to the video this morning. I really appreciate your service and for all you've sacrificed for the for the country at large. Really appreciate that. Okay. Uh, just as a reminder, the bond market is closed today, but everything else uh, should be uh, open as it always is. So let's look at SPY. What I want to do today is I'm going to zoom out to the daily and then go down on the lower time frames for both the uh, indexes and uh, the FANG names for the benefit of those on daily time frames that are trying to swing some of these positions. So, and for the for getting a read on the broader market at large, uh, if you recall, 75% of a stock's overall direction is tied to the market. So if you've got, you know, the Qs or SPY or IWM going up or down, that's going to be the most significant factor on whether you want to be long or short regardless of the stock that you're in, because if SPY is going down and you're long a particular stock, it's going to be a headwind. So whether you trade these indexes or not, they have a lot to do with how well your individual positions are going to perform. So let's look at SPY. What I've done here is box in this trading range that goes from 320 to 357 and we're in the midst of what's been a 10 or 12 week consolidation period we've had several round trips from the top of the box to the bottom back of it back again and now we're at the top of the box threatening to break out now the width of the box is $35, 320 to 355 On a breakout that sticks, that would target a measured move up to 390 So if you were trading the daily time frame, of course, if you bought down here at the low, you're good to go you've made $35 so far on your position on a breakout I would be a buyer above 357 on a daily closing basis now we're on the daily chart a daily close above 357 is a buy and your only obstacle will be this prior high about 364 which was made on Monday if it can clear that then it would be blue skies ahead at all-time highs there's always a caveat there's always a what if there's always a yellow flag out there to worry about and we've had these persistent bearish divergences on the PPO indicator and RSI. Notice at this high, the positioning of PPO. Then at the second high, lower. And then at the third high, lower still. So price is, price is trying to make a higher high, but hasn't been able to do that. You know, we've got essentially a triple top now and PPO still at low levels now does that make it a sell no it's just a yellow flag that a reversal could be underway under the surface we don't know but if we follow price and we get the breakout what you'd like to see is a nice move by momentum and it can burn through these bearish divergences for instance 
if price starts running here and momentum turns higher and gets above these prior peaks, then the, bird, the divergences have been burned through and therefore negated. So keep 357 in your crosshairs. And, and that level comes from, from lower time frames where I got a, got a bead on it. So I would use 357 as your buy level and then 390 as your target on a longer term, you know, into the end of the year kind of trade. Now, if we drill down on the two hour chart for you shorter term traders, we had the big opening on Monday. They sold that off and filled this large gap yesterday. I've, I've left it in there because the levels are still important. I've got a level here at 354. I have a level here at uh, 359. And I've also dropped in the FIB retracements of that move. So as price works higher here in the morning, we're, we're, we're trading about 357 as of 6.30 when I started the video. So these areas may be zones of resistance going up. And given we're already at 357, I would say look for something around 359. And if you're not in and it clears 359, then you can use that as a line to shoot against for a potential push up to 364. So this morning, I like 359 as your bull bear pivot. I like being long above and uh, trying an objective short if it gets stalled or rejected here would then target a move back down towards uh, either 354 or 350. Uh, and this just shows the the uh, 30 minute chart more exploded view notice the ppo is setting up for a bull cross at the zero line and if that executes and it looks like it will that would be a bullish setup for this morning and here's that 359 level and uh with price uh, currently trading around 357. So it's up about, mm, uh, I think, a little over 1%. So green this morning. So those should be good levels today. 364 as a high. 359 as a bull bear pivot. And then 354 as first support and 350 as second support. Q's. I've drawn in another $20 trading range above the original $20 trading range. So what I've got all told on the daily chart is a $40 trading range between 300 and 260. with price currently testing this midpoint at around 280. So for traders on the daily, I think you can use 280 as your pivot, the midpoint of the range. Anything above 280, I think you can be long, looking for a push back up to the top of the box. If 280 were to fail, I like being short with a first target of 270 and a second target being the bottom of the box at 260. I think that's a simple setup. I think that's a simple trade. Now, this morning we're, we're uh, trading at 
trading around 286. So right here in the middle of the range, it's kind of hard to take that trade if you're trading the, the daily time frame. I'd wait for, uh, if you got long yesterday, that would have been great. Now, if you're not in, I think you got to wait for an objective level, either up towards 300 or back down towards 280. Maybe price will come back down this morning and hit that area. Notice you got the 50 in green right in this area. That'll also act as support. <clears throat> so I think uh, 280 is a good level on the Qs. Here it is on a two hour chart. We went down, tested that 280 level yesterday and recovered it. And now this morning we're in this uh, 286 area. There is a little bit of a gap to fill above and then you'll run into some resistance levels at uh, 290 and 293. And then you've got your, your prior highs up at uh, 298. So if we've got a $40 trading range and we get a definitive breakout, then we'll be targeting something around 340 on a measured move, you know, 338, 340 right in that range on a break and hold above uh, 298. 30-minute <clears throat> chart. Notice here too, we've got a bull cross in the works. And if this were to, you know, curl up, execute that bull cross, that would be a bullish development. We had oversold conditions yesterday and uh, RSI is moving above 30, so that's a bullish move. But we've also got this trading range on the 30 minute between 187.50 and uh, 282.50. And, you know, if you get a move back down here towards this 282, I think that's a place where you could get long with a tight stop below and look for a move back up. I mean, that's a $5 range, so that's a nice trade in and of itself. There is a small gap to fill right above. If price doesn't give us that opportunity here this morning and it, and it goes and breaks above this 287.50, I think you can get long there and then look for 290 and then 292.50, 293 area and possibly all the way up to 297, which was, you know, up at the prior high. IWM has broken out. We've had this gentle rising channel ever since June. It's not made a ton of progress, but it has broken out. We still have these divergences. We're, you know, at new highs in price, but we're at the lows in momentum. And it's not really the strongest setup in the world, but there is the potential for momentum to burn through these divergences. If, you know, if price were to keep rising here, you'd expect momentum to gather itself and break above and as it recaptures these previous levels, then that would be uh, momentum burning through the bearish divergences. Notice we've got a sizable gap below. If you're trading this on the daily time frame, I would just stay long against uh, 170. Uh, 167.50 right in that area and set your stop just below and as long as it holds that breakout should be good to go and if this rotation into value and cyclicals persists you know regional banks uh, you know all the names we've talked about travel and leisure hotels 
uh, casinos, cruise ships, all that kind of stuff, IWM should be able to hold the breakout. Now, if that if that trade falters, then that's a whole new ball game. If it uh, breaks back into this rising uh, channel, here it is on the two-hour chart. 170 is held so far, and this morning we're up in that 173 area. For shorter-term traders, if it breaks above 173 and holds, you can be long and look for 177 for a retest of this high. But if it falls back below, it's an objective short looking for a move back to 170. And then if 170 breaks, a complete back, uh, gap backfill down to 164. But IWM's been the strongest of the indexes. So like I said, if the value cyclical trade persists, uh, I don't see any particular reason why it would sell off. Certainly, you know, respect the levels. I wouldn't hesitate being short if you had a little breakout here and then you came back below. That's, you know, TA 101. If you lose a level from above, that's a place to short. If you recapture a level from below, recapturing 173, then it's a buy. And certainly anything above this uh, 177 uh, is a buy. Break the all-time highs as a buy. Remember that one. 30-minute. I, I put on this channel here. I don't know how valid it is, but it, it looks pretty good. A little break outside, break back below. Find the midpoint. Ride it up. Now we're right at the top of the uh, range with uh, the potential to come up here towards 177 uh, at the prior high. Now what I've done is I went through FANG because I wanted to take a look at the daily chart. I know we get wrapped up in the, you know, the hourly for short time, short term trading opportunities, but I wanted to see kind of where we were at on, on the FANGs on the daily. So this, this should help the traders out there that are working on a daily time frame. So Facebook has essentially carved out a trading area between 245 and 280. We had a fake breakout here and then a fake breakout here. We just had that and now we're below uh, we tested the 50 yesterday and reclaimed it, but we're still below the 8-day and below the 20. So, if I were trading the daily time frame, I would buy a breakout above 280 and then look for a move to the low 290s and then if if uh, we got the breakout of this downtrend line you know roll up your strikes roll up your stops and then look for a move to all-time highs but while we're in the box I think right here you're in no man's land and I think it's a hard place to take a trade on the daily unless you're just going to shoot against the the uh, 50 EMA uh, and, and have a tight stop on it but momentum is low looking like it's rolling over and RSI looks like it wants to break below 50 and that would set it up for a test of 260 and potentially 245 so and if you got those if you got that move then 
those are objective places to try a long. Uh, this 260 has been a good level. Look at all the times it held. And then uh, 245 has been a good level as well. If you got that move, you've got the uh, 200 coming up as well, which will act as uh, support, you know, when it, if it gets up there. So I think you'll have a lot of company uh, trying to buy at 245, but uh, kind of in no man's land here. I'd prefer to see if this, uh, if the money coming out of big cap tech persists. But if it breaks 280, I think it's a long. Here are the fibs that I've dropped in on this most recent move. You can see that at 276, uh, 280, 281, and then 285 are fib retracement areas where there could be potential rejections. So watch those today if you're a short-term trader uh, for price to advance to a certain point and then stall in reverse. Apple. I've penciled in what looks to my eye like a big right triangle. Here was your high at the split. We had another high here and our, meet, our most recent high was uh, just the other day on Monday at 120. Series of lower highs with a defined base down here at 107.50 with a midpoint at 115. Like I said before, I think 115 is your your bull bear pivot. If it can hold 115 and break above this downtrend line, and certainly with a break above 120, I think you can be long. But on any move below 115, you've got the 50 here. A break below would put price below all the moving averages. And I would favor a move back down to 107.50. And then that sets up a very key spot because a break below would favor a gap fill down to the mid 90s. Whereas a hold, you know, it's held here, here, and here. A hold would be a nice objective long at a, at a, at a nice entry point with a stop just below. So we'll have to see how price behaves here in the next couple of days, if it can break out or if it continues to kind of dribble lower. Notice the momentum profile though, you know, pretty steep downward action here and bearish regime on the RSI. On the 60 minute chart, here's some finer detail. Uh, yesterday, uh, Monday, this, this encapsulates Monday and Tuesday's action. We had that opening high, which they faded all the way back here. We got a 38% fib retracement and now it's starting to roll over. If there is a push this morning up to 118, that would be a place where if it stalls, it's an objective place to try a short with a stop just above. But if it breaks out, I think you can be long against 118 and look for a move to 120. Notice the posture, the PPO. If this were to come down here, come back to the zero line, reset, and then curl higher, that would be a really bullish move on the hourly chart. And you could get this, you know, push back up towards 120 or even higher on a breakout above 120. Then you're looking for 122 
and potentially 125. But, you know, that's putting the cart before the horse. It's got to, uh, it's got to clear this 117, 118 to have that scenario uh, begin to play out. Tesla. If you're trying to trade Tesla on the daily chart, you've probably been kind of frustrated here for quite a while as it toggles in a narrow trading range compared to these moves, you know, where something was happening almost every single day. Here has been a lot of hard sledding, really working between four, 450 and 400, 390. You can see we've got this rising symmetrical triangle working into the narrow part, the apex uh, in the days ahead. There's energy building here. And I think if it resolves to the upside, I would anticipate new highs. If it can clear 450, I think you're looking at, you know, 500, 550. But if it breaks down below this trend line here at 390, I think you're probably going to come back here to this uh, 330 level. I mean, this is a $50 trading range. So a break above targets 500, a break below targets 340. And with this prior low here at 330 and a breakout level at 330, I think it would find that that number there. So if you're trading in a daily time frame, I would just focus on those levels and this triangle. Break above, take it long. Fail, take it short. If price works in here in the days ahead and you want to be on the long side, that's fine. Take your long against this trend line with a stop just below and see if you get a push up to the top of the box with a potential breakout. Here's a 60 minute chart with the fibs dropped in. I mean, for me, uh, I mean, these levels have just been remarkable. 450, 430, 420, bull bear pivot, 410, and then 390. So for me, any kind of push into 420 that can't get through, I think you try a short there and see if you can get a move back to 410 or even a check back to this low. If you break above 420, get long for a move to 430 and potentially uh, 450. I like those levels. They've, they've continued to work. I mean, you can see it here. You can see it here. And uh, you can see it here. Uh, they've worked uh, nearly every time. So continue to lean on them and just focus on your execution and your placement of your stops. And, uh, and I think you have a nice trading setup. Microsoft. Trading range between 202.50 and 217.50, basically a $15 range. Fake breakout, fake breakout, fake breakout, back in the box. I think this is going to find the bottom of the box again. Uh, what would, what would, uh, change my mind is a solid break above 217.50 that holds that can push back up towards you know 225 but this has been really soggy and notice the bearish divergences on both RSI and PPO we had peaks at this high 
and on this this big breakout, you thought you'd have got higher PPO momentum, but you didn't. Lower high gave you a heads up that it could possibly be fake. That's what happened. Lower high on momentum, and then on the subsequent breakouts, momentum has been uh, waning. So very weak price action. Saw saw a decent amount of bearish option order flow yesterday in Microsoft. So my base case here is false breakout back into the range, come back to the bottom at 202.50, and then you know decide what's going to happen. If that were to break down there, your target would be 190. You got the 200 here at you know 191 or so, but that 190 was the original breakout, and I think you'd have a lot of a lot of buyers trying to take a stab at it right there for a you know a super dip. But this has been a frustrating period for you know longer term Microsoft um, holders as it you know consolidated since July. I mean, that's a lot, you know, one, two, three, four. We're going on four and a half months of nothingness for all intents and purposes on the daily chart. Here's some granularity on the 60 minute chart. Here's that 117.50 level that I think is key. If you get a kickback up to that level, I think it fails there at the 38% uh, 30, retracement, and then it rolls back over. Uh, this gap is close to being filled. I'll have to look at the, uh, no, we were about a dollar shy yesterday of filling this gap. So you may get a down move to fill that gap and then a bounce, but I would be looking to fade any, any bounces in Microsoft either up to this 313, uh, 213 level would be a good place. And then your FIB levels on the way up, 217.50, 219, and then 221 would be locations where I'd expect a bounce to fail. Amazon, rough price action, man, real rough. And this is a good illustration of, of, of a lot of these principles that, you know, that we've not been harping on, just pointing out. It established this trading range back in July. And that was when Microsoft started consolidating as well. So we had this range from 2950 to 3260. So that's a $90 range, fake breakout, back in the range, bottom of the range. Grinds its way higher, fake breakout, back in the range, bottom of the range. Grinds its way higher, fake breakout, working its way to the bottom of the range. That's, I mean, even someone on the daily chart can trade that. I mean, that, I mean, there's a lot of recycling here, but if you're playing for, you know, 90, 100, $150, those are nice, nice swing trades. So now I'm looking for this area right down here at 2950 as a place to initiate a trade if you're on the daily time frame and this holds here that's when you're supposed to buy for a recycle back up to the top and you set your stop just below and you can see here that we've had a couple of false breakdowns and what happens is you know, everybody knows that, you know, people put their stops just below this level 
and then they spend a day clearing out those stops and then you know rip it back the other way so be careful about that and what you may want to do is just you know drop it down drop it down 50 bucks to 2900 i mean if it loses 2900 you're definitely coming back to the 200 day at 2765 that's still a great trade that's 150 bucks I think that's worth it and if there's you know and if a bigger problem develops and it loses the 200 then you're coming all the way back to 2500 so that would be uh, obviously quite significant and if all that happened there's probably stuff happening you know elsewhere in the market as well here it is on the daily uh, drop the fibs in these $50 increments have been working great I would continue to lean on them uh, if you got a kickback to 3100 or back to this sliver of a gap that was left behind I think those are places to try shorts you've got a 38 percent that aligns perfectly with this 3150 then you've got the 50% here at 3200 and then the 618 back up towards 3250 those fibs align really well with these $50 increment levels that have been working for us uh, as lateral support and resistance so I would lean on that on any kickback I would be looking to fade that and uh, have it come back down here and test this 2975 2950 level uh, I'm looking for this to be tested again Google really the I mean the best of all the all the fang names uh, with its recent earnings uh, gap higher it's held those earnings and is now consolidating above the prior all-time high so as long as this 720 holds I think the longs are good to go if 1720 were to fail I think you're going to come back and fill that gap to 1650 and notice where the 20 EMA is coming in same level I think that would be a place to try a long if that gap filled but then you know if 1650 were to fail then you know it's going to roll all the way back down here to 1550 so but no divergence look it, it came up price made a higher high and momentum is at the highs so no no bearish divergence there at all so that's that's a very good uh, productive sign so I think your key level is 1720 as a bull bear pivot on Google here it is on the 60 minute chart I expanded this trading range yesterday I had it at 1740 but yesterday look at all the candle touches to 1720 that's why I moved it down I think as long as 1720 holds the longs are fine and uh, looking for a move back up to 1780 so that's 60 bucks that's a nice trade if you can catch you know something down in here for an objective long with a stop just below I like that idea I like that trade um, but if it loses 1720 then you've got to exit your longs and uh, uh, try to play this gap fill here for sixty dollars as well from seventeen hundred down to sixteen fifty sixteen forty area and lastly uh, Netflix big ninety dollar range high bottom of the box low bottom of the box top of the box recycle recycle here 
at 470. That's your objective long on the daily time frame with a stop just below. And you're looking, you're just simply looking for a recycle back up to 560. And if all the stars align and you get a breakout, $90 trading range, breakout and hold, 90 added on to 560 gives you 650 as your measured move target if you get a breakout above this box. Now, a breakdown gives you 380 back down here. $90 from 470 is 380. So here is your your big pivot level on the on the daily chart. As long as it holds 470, longs are good to go. Be careful though on a breakdown. You've got the 200 here that'll help, but after all this consolidation, if there's a breakdown below, I I don't think it's stopping on a you know a fifteen dollar move. I think it'll I think it'll blast right through this two hundred if this were to fail. And lastly, on the sixty minute chart, big gap down on Monday. All the way down to 465. Big bounce up to 494, which is on the chart. Roll over to retest the low. That might be it. That might be it. Double tag of the low. Grind up here higher. Break back above this level here at you know 487.50 and see if you can get a gap fill. But anything below 480, probably coming back down here again. Uh, I didn't put the fibs on, but you can certainly do that. You know, from the swing high here down to the lows, uh, just eyeballing it. You know, here's going to be a 38. Your 50% will probably come in very close to this 494. And then your 505 will be your 618 retracement. So those are all levels that we've had on the board for a long time. And if you've been trading Netflix, they've been working very, very well. So continue to lean on the levels. So wrapping it all up, watch oil today. Uh, we've got an inventory report at, I believe that breaks at 1030. Oil's been on the run. It's the number one factor in realized inflation. It's the biggest component, you know, in that basket of all the different things that they measure. Uh, and, and inflation expectations. So if oil breaks out and it's pushing that envelope on the upper, upper side today and it breaks out, we could have some really compelling energy trades and that is really going to fuel this uh, value cyclical type rotation. So watch that today. And of course, watch all these Fang names, they've been trading pretty weak. And some of them are kind of testing the low end of the range. If they break, obviously it's it's going to be uh, bearish news for the Qs. We're not there yet. They haven't altogether let go. But we've got to watch that and... <clears throat> watch yourself on thinking that this cyclical trade is another head fake. Uh, it seems a little more real this time, uh, given the vaccine news and 
energy prices responding. Uh, it's too bad the bond market will be closed today because yields have been rising, so we won't be able to, to tell that uh, today. But we will be able to tell by looking at IWM uh, energy, some of the cyclical sectors, to see if we get continued follow through and, uh, and continued weakness in the queues. So be watching for that today. All right, longer, longer video this morning. I'll wrap it up here. I will be looking for some setups and pass those along as soon as I got uh, a few to um, offer. And we can take a look at them together later on in the morning. If you're new to the channel and like what you've heard, please hit the subscribe button and the alarm bell. That way you'll get every bit of my content as I publish. Over in the show notes are convenient links to the blog site and uh, how to register for my content. That way you'll get an email each and every morning along with an invitation to our trading room, which uh, has a nice little community started of uh, active, sharp traders, motivated to get better, and we'd love to have you become part of the team. We've just recently added a couple new members that are making some nice contributions. But even if you just want to hang out and observe, great place to make some new friends and pick up some new trading ideas. So uh, please take advantage of that. So have a good uh, start to your morning today. Let's see how we open in a couple of hours. And we'll talk to you later this morning. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.